What's going on guys? Welcome back to Trafish Aquatics. Today we're going to be talking about LED aquarium lighting. Specifically, what do you do if your light starts not functioning properly? Or if the light starts failing? Or your light starts getting dim? Do you go out and buy a new one? Or do you try and diagnose it to try and save yourself a little bit of money? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go out and we're going to diagnose the lights on my 125 gallon aquarium and figure out why one of them is much dimmer than the other one and why it's not putting out enough light. So let's get out there and take a look. All right guys, so we're out in my living room in front of my 125 gallon tropical community tank. And as you can see, I'm having a lighting issue. So on this tank, I have two 36 inch Phoenix Planet Plus 24 seven aquarium lights. And each of these lights runs about $100. Now they are LED lights and they're rated at 50,000 hours lifetime for the LED themselves. And as you can see, I'm having an issue. I've only had these lights for about two years, going on three years. So running six hours a day, they're running anywhere between 5,000 and 6,000 hours total lifetime. Um, so obviously nowhere near the 50,000 hour life expectancy for the LEDs themselves. But as you can see, we're clearly having an issue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help you guys uh, figure out what might be wrong with these lights if you're having a similar situation. And it's actually a pretty cheap fix and very easy to do it yourself. So let's check it out. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to inspect on these lights is going to be the LEDs themselves. So let's take the light off the top of the tank and inspect the individual LEDs for failure or damage. All right, so basically I know this is gonna be a little hard to see because you got a light glaring right at you, but we're gonna be able to see enough of this to understand uh, what we're looking at. So basically we've got the LED facing you guys and what we're gonna be looking for is individual LEDs that have gone bad and burnt out. Um, as you can see, We've got three lights wide and probably 30 lights tall, and all of them are currently working and producing light, which is to be expected considering this light only has 5,000 hours on it and the life expectancy on these is about 50,000 hours. So as you can see, the lights are all currently working, but they're having an issue with putting out enough lumens, right? They're not getting bright enough. So the LED strip is currently working, so we're gonna look into something else. And the only other thing that goes to an LED light like this is going to be the power supply. So let's check out that power supply and see what's going on with that. All right guys, so I've gone ahead and I've opened up my cabinet and I have gotten out our power supplies. Now, this is just a prop for the video, but this is exactly what the ones look like that are on this aquarium, right here. So if you look on your light, you'll have your power supply and your plug that plugs into your wall outlet. And this has a bunch of resistors and other electronic components in it that can go bad. So if I go ahead and I feel the ones that are actually hooked up on this aquarium right now, one of them right here is a little warm and the other one is much, much cooler. It's actually cold. And I believe what's happening is the resistors that are inside of this have gone bad and they're not allowing the amount of electricity to flow through to the LEDs that it's actually supposed to for the correct output and light. So I'm gonna disconnect the power off of this one and we'll see which one it is. Like I thought, it's this one. Now I'm also noticing that on this power supply we are getting a ringing noise. I don't know if you can hear it in the video, but we are getting a ringing noise out of the actual light strip up above and I believe that's also because it's not receiving the right amount of current. So what I'm gonna do, since I've already unhooked this, I'm going to take my new one, which is right here. And if you guys have a Phoenix light that you need a power supply for, um, I'll leave a link down in the description. If you wanna get something like this for your light, all you have to do is reach out to the light manufacturer and request a new one. Uh, likely they have replacement parts that you can just order a new light, like I said before, for me would be $100. This power supply was 25 bucks. I think it was $24.99 with $5 shipping. So for a quarter of the price of a light, I can extend the life of my light instead of buying a new one. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hook this up and we're gonna see if that's the fix. I'm 99% sure that it is because I've already had to do this with my other half. So we'll go ahead and we'll pull out this old one right here. And if you compare them, the new one is actually much bigger, which would lead me to believe that they have used uh, larger components 
that would allow this to work better. So now we'll plug in our light. Voila! We've got bright light again. And the tank looks much, much better. So there you go, guys. There's the video on how to fix your LED light that might be failing. Um, so basically all you're looking at is new power supplies pretty cheap, especially when compared to a new light, especially if you're running some lighting that's a little bit more expensive than Aquanit or Nikru lights. Um, a very easy fix, very simple, and can restore your lights to the like new working condition. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching Trafish Aquatics. As always, links in the description down below for products I used in this video, as well as the products I recommend to you guys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Before I go, I think Ruben wants to say hi. Come here. You want to say hi? Oh, yes, I know. I know. Oh, I know. Yes. Thanks for watching.